Today's video is going to be a quick review of what we learned in class today. Solving quadratics by taking the square root. Our first step will be to isolate the x squared term. The second step will be to square root both sides. The inverse of an x squared is taking the square root, and that's why we will do that. And then the third step will be to write your two answers in the curly braces, just like yesterday. So let's start with example one. The first thing I want to do is isolate the x squared term. To do that, I will need to do the inverse of minus 4, which is add 4. 0 plus 4 is 4. x squared comes down. And then we're ready for step 2. Square root both sides. Square root, square root. Now, the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of x squared is x. The only thing that most people forget about here is that we need to include a plus 2 and a minus 2 in this answer because both 2 times 2 will get me to 4 and negative 2 times negative 2 will also get you to 4. So we need to account for both of those possibilities. So when I write my final answer in the braces, it will look like negative 2 comma 2. And that's it. Example 2. There's going to be a little bit more work here to isolate the x squared term, starting with the um, addition first. So I'm going to add this 45 to both sides. Those will cancel. I'm going to bring down the 5x squared. 0 plus 45 is 45. I'm not quite finished yet. The x squared still is being multiplied by this 5, so the inverse of that will be to divide by 5. Those will cancel x squared comes down and 45 divided by 5 is 9. Now I'm ready for step 2. Let's square root both sides. And the square root of 9 is 3. Bring down your plus and minus and then I have an x now here by itself. And then my last step is to write my final answer in my braces. And that's it. Let's go look at a few more examples. Step one, isolate your variable. So in this case, I need to subtract 100 from both sides. That will cancel. I now have negative 100 equals x squared. Step two, we're going to square root. The square root of x squared is fine. It will still give me x. But then I've got a problem right here. I need to come up with two numbers that will multiply together, and they have to be the exact same number to get to a negative 100. The closest thing that I can think of is 10 times 10 but that will give you a positive 100. So let's change the sign. Negative 10 times negative 10 will still get you to a 100, but what is negative times negative? It is also positive. Some people might say, well, why don't you just do one negative 10 and then one positive 10, and that will get you to a negative 100, but the problem is now, is that these numbers are not exactly the same. So we cannot use those. The only answer that I can put here is that I can't find an answer. So um, no solution. All right, and that's it. And then let's look at our, fa our let's look at our final example here. Um, I have an x squared equals or minus 12 equals 0 so I'm going to add this 12 
x squared equals 12. Step two, square root both sides. That gives me my x. And then I realized that 12 is not actually a perfect square. Nine would have been and 16 would have been, but 12 is in the middle of those. So what I can do is factor this down to three times four, and then that four can go even further, two times two. It's important for us to remember that a square root would have a two right there where the root is, and they are wanting us to find groups of two numbers that are identical. And I do see that right here, two twos. So those two twos are gonna come out But then, then the problem that I have is this three doesn't have a number to pair up with it. So what happens is that three is kind of stuck under the square root. It can't come out. Okay, and that is your answer. Now, in math one, lots of times they will give you the answer to choose from in multiple choice as um, a decimal form. And so if you were to just type that into your calculator, what you would get for the decimal form of this is an irrational number. 3.46410161615, and then it keeps going. I'm just gonna stop it right there. Two square roots of three is the same as 3.464. Either one of those would be an acceptable answer. And then let's look into our quick introduction into the quadratic formula. This is not actually a part of our Math 1 curriculum, but it is a wonderful tool to learn. For one, you will eventually have to learn this in Math 2. But the reason that I love it so much is because the quadratic formula will factor every single quadratic function that you can be given. It's like a catch-all. All these different methods that we learn are great tools to speed up the process, but this is one tool that will work 100% of the time. I'm gonna pause for the bell. Okay, so let's look at um, first, one way to remember the formula that I did introduce in class is a song. They don't necessarily give you this formula, you do have to memorize it and our brain tends to remember things a lot better if we can put it to music. So I will sing this one time, and remember I'm not a singer, but hopefully it will help you remember. So here we go. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC all over two A. And so as I'm filling out my equation and writing it down, I just sing that little song in my head and then it tends to help me remember. Now we need to start trying to figure out how we're gonna take this equation and then plug the pieces into the formula. Starting with my A value. So if you recall, in a quadratic function, they go in alphabetical order. A is in the front, B is in the middle, and then C is your last term there. So my A that's sitting here in front of the X squared is actually just a one. My B is a negative five right there. And then my C is a big number, it's a 36. Actually, it's a negative 36. So I am gonna take these three numbers now and put them in the formula in the places of the letters. So starting with the A, I see two A's right there and right there. So I'm gonna put a one in both of those spots. Now I'm gonna go plug in the negative five for both of these B's. So negative five and negative five. And then the C is just right there in that one place and it's a negative 36. So far, there's nothing hard about this. Um, it's the simplifying that most, most students start to struggle with. Um, it is just a lot of basic 
multiplication and division in, in your head. Um, it's not difficult, it's just tedious. So I'm gonna start to break this down one piece at a time, okay? Um, let's do right here. I have a negative, negative five. So that is gonna give me a positive five. Bring down the plus and minus, and then there's still gonna be a square root. Now I'm gonna reduce what is negative five squared. It will simplify to 25. And then I'm gonna simplify all this back here. So I know I have a negative and a negative, so the result will be positive. And then I have four times one is four, and four times 36. Four times 36 is gonna give me 144. And then finally, on the bottom here, I have two times one, which will just be two. Okay. All right, I'm gonna come down this way and then I'm gonna start to work my way back to the right. So I have a positive five plus or minus the square root, and let's add together 25 and 144. I'll get 169 divided by two. And then I'm gonna say equals and I'm gonna reduce again. Um, I still have five plus or minus and it's gonna divide by two, but let's evaluate. What is the square root of 169? That is gonna be 13. And then I'm just about ready to break this up. Okay, don't forget that this plus and minus is two separate answers. So here's how I'm gonna get those two separate answers. On the top, I'm gonna to say, Five plus 13 divided by 2. And on the bottom, I will say 5 minus 13. And there's my minus divided by 2. And then just the last step of reducing them both. 5 plus 13 is 18. 18 divided by 2 is 9. And then down below, I have 5 minus 13 will give me a negative 8 divided by 2 is a negative 4. And those are my two solutions. Let's pick a color I haven't used. Red, blue, green, orange. Okay. Let's just use pink. So I'm gonna take, that didn't show up very well. I'm gonna take this nine and this negative four and I'm gonna put them together so that my final answer is negative four comma nine. It's super tedious, it's a super great tool it's also not a requirement. I just wanted to show it to you. Hopefully this helps you with your homework over the weekend. I will see you back here on Monday where we start to take all of these tools and apply them to real life situations. Y'all have a good weekend. See you soon.